This is a lesson on passive and active voice, a quick guide to distinguishing and choosing proper voice. Hi, my name is Chad, and in this lesson I will teach you the distinct uses of passive and active voice as well as the principles and conditions that will help you decide which voice to choose. So what do we mean when we talk about voice? What is it? Voice is a grammatical term that refers to the action of the verb, whether the subject is performing the action or receiving the action. Grammarians recognize three kinds of voice for verbs, active, passive, and middle voice. Active voice referring to action performed by the subject and received by the object if the sentence has one. Passive voice referring to action received by the subject and performed by the object if the sentence has one. Middle voice referring to action performed by the subject and received by the subject. Such as in the sentence, the hiker helped herself out of the ravine, in which the hiker both performs and receives the action of the verb. However, in this video, we will be focusing on active and passive voice, not on middle voice. Remember, active voice is when the subject is the doer of the action in the sentence. So let's try to better understand this kind of action by looking at a few examples. Remember, sentences are said to be in active voice when the subject is the doer of the action. Consider these examples. The hitchhiker waved at each driver. Maya Angelou wrote emotive poetry. Whistle pigs burrowed under our shed. The reporter asked him questions. What are the actions in these sentences? The verbs waved, wrote, burrowed, and asked. Who is performing the action of the verbs? The hitchhiker, Maya Angelou, whistle pigs, and the reporter. Each of these sentences are examples of active voice because the subject is the doer of the action. Notice that a sentence does not need to have an object to be an example of active voice. The important thing is that the subject of the sentence is performing the action of the verb, that the subject is the doer of the action. To identify active voice in a sentence, identify the subject and verb. Ask, who is doing the action of the verb? And if the answer is the subject, then the sentence is active. Let's apply these three steps to a sample sentence to see whether we can identify active voice in a more complex sentence. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. First, let's identify the subjects and verbs in the sentence. God is the subject and desired is the verb in the subordinate clause. And he is the subject and guaranteed is the verb in the main clause. Second, we need to ask who is doing the action of the verbs. God is doing the first action, and he is doing the second action, so the subject in each clause is performing the action. Step 3 tells us that if the answer to the question is the subject, then the sentence is in active voice. So our sample sentence is in active voice in both the subordinate clause and the main clause. Remember, passive voice is when the subject is the receiver of the action in the sentence. So let's try to better understand this kind of action as well by looking at a few examples. Remember, sentences are said to be in passive voice when the subject is the receiver of the action. Consider these examples. A brush fire was started in our woods. I was saved. The black poodle was being chased. Books were read. Papers were written. What are the actions in these sentences? The verbs was started, was saved, was being chased, were read, and were written. Who is performing the action of the verbs? Someone not mentioned in the sentence. So. Most importantly, not the subject. Each of these sentences are examples of passive voice because the subject is the receiver of the action. You can also easily identify passive voice by looking for a be verb plus a past participle of a verb. Was started, was saved, was being chased, were read, were written. The important thing is that the subject of the sentence is receiving the action of the verb, that the subject is the receiver of the action. To identify passive voice in a sentence, identify the subject and verb, ask who is doing the action of the verb, and if the answer is not the subject, then the sentence is passive. Let's apply these three steps to a sample sentence to see whether we can identify active voice in a more complex sentence. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. First, let's identify the subject and verbs in the sentence. 
You is the subject, and we're washed, we're sanctified, and we're justified are the verbs in the sentence. Second, we need to ask, who is doing the action of the verb? It's not you. Instead, it is the Spirit of God, an object that is performing the action of the verb. The subject you is receiving the action of the being washed and sanctified and justified. Step 3 tells us that if the answer to the question is not the subject, then the sentence is in passive voice. So our sample sentence is in passive voice. Remember, ask yourself, who is doing the action of the verb? If the answer is the subject, then it's active voice or middle voice. If the answer is not the subject, then it's passive voice. Now that we understand the difference between active and passive voice and how to identify them, let's discuss which voice is proper, how to know when to choose active or passive voice. As a general principle of good writing, Prefer active voice, which often makes sentences easier to follow and which often helps readers better understand action and agency in the sentence. Passive voice is often a problematic voice because it is wordy, indirect, and weak, and it obscures the hidden agent's moral responsibility. Your dessert was eaten versus I ate your dessert, which expresses responsibility. See how easily the passive voice shifts responsibility off of the one who ate dessert? Policies have been established versus we made policies, which expresses responsibility for their policies and which demonstrates irresponsible bureaucracy. Frequent passive voice saps the life out of sentences and paragraphs and essays because passive voice merely indicates state of being, smothering the action of the sentence. Consider the following examples, the first in passive voice and the second in active voice. The president was elected in November. He was sworn in two months later and was recognized worldwide as our president. That bill was passed after the president was voted into office. Voters elected the president in November. The Chief Justice of the United States swore in the president and the world recognized him as our president. Congress passed that bill after the American people voted the president into office. Note how the passive voice example is not concrete or specific, lacking clear subjects, and is not engaging, lacking lively action. The active voice example clarifies specific subjects and frees the actions of the verbs. As the norm in most fields, active voice tends to be more common than passive voice. Writers in most fields prefer active voice over passive voice. However, the sciences and social sciences often use passive voice as much as, if not more than, active voice. For this reason, many writing instructors urge students to avoid passive voice altogether. Although passive voice is not inherently ungrammatical or non-stylish, instructors would rather student writers avoid the pitfalls of overusing or defaulting to passive voice. Nevertheless, passive voice can be an effective stylistic choice if a writer knows when to use it. So how do you use passive voice effectively, knowing when to prefer passive voice over active voice? Here are a few warrants for using passive voice. First, to sustain the flow of the paragraph. Consider this example. As a student over the last two decades, I have struggled to learn grammatical rules. These rules, I have found, cannot be taught as easily as they can be caught. Who did the teaching and catching? We cannot tell by just looking at the sentence. This writer chose to follow the sound stylistic principle of starting a sentence with familiar information, rules, before moving on to new information, teaching and catching, increasing the flow of the sentences. Second, to emphasize the receiver of the action and minimize the doer of the action. Consider this example. I was given a gift by the president. Who did the giving? The president. The writer apparently wanted to emphasize the giver by placing the president in the emphatic position at the end of the sentence, so the writer used passive voice. Third, to keep the doer of the action anonymous. Consider this example. The window was broken. Who did the breaking? We cannot tell by just looking at the sentence. The writer apparently wants to keep the culprit anonymous for obvious reasons, especially if he is the culprit. So the writer chose passive voice. Fourth, to talk about an action whose doer is unknown. Consider this example. The package was delivered Monday night. Who did the delivering? We cannot tell by just looking at the sentence. The writer apparently did not see the deliverer, so the writer chose to use passive voice since the subject is unknown. 
Although good writers generally prefer the active voice and revise their drafts to use it more often, sometimes using passive voice better serves their readers or their purpose. So avoid defaulting to passive voice in your sentences. Develop a writing style that prefers the active voice and only depart to passive voice if you have warrant for doing so. Carefully choosing active or passive voice can drastically improve the style and readability of your writing in all your future projects. I hope you have found this quick lesson helpful as you seek to write with active and passive voice. For more information, check your writing manuals, visit local writing centers, or consult online writing helps. Or check out more videos at our YouTube channel. And visit Southeastern's Writing Center website where you will find dozens of helpful links and handouts offering writing assistance for a variety of situations and audiences. Thank you.